Amen. What a blessing it is to be back in the house of God tonight. Well, it's already been sung about. We've heard about the city tonight in the singing here. That reminded me of what uh, Brother Harry t uh, preached on Sunday morning. There's comfort in the words. There's going to be a rapture. And we're going to all get to go to that city, we that are saved. Uh, if you would, uh, turn your Bibles to Matthew chapter number 17. That'll be Matthew chapter number 17. And when you get there, we'll start in verse 14. All right, starting in verse 14, the Bible says, And when they were come to the multitude, there came to him a certain man kneeling down to him and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is a lunatic, and sore vexed, for oftentimes he falleth into the fire and oft into the water. And I brought him to thy disciples, and they could not Cure him. Then Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him hither to me. And Jesus rebuked the devil, and he departed out of him, and the child was cured from that very hour. Yes. Then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, why could not we cast him out? And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief. For verily I say unto you, If you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove. And nothing shall be impossible unto you, howbeit this kind goeth not out but by prayer and fasting. Right. Let us pray. Dear kind and gracious Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for drawing us back to your house here tonight. Lord, I want to thank you for letting us feel your sweet spirit move through here already. Lord, I pray that you touch the preaching tonight. Lord, I pray that you uh, preach through me. Lord, I'm just the mouthpiece. Lord, I pray that you touch our hearts, Lord. Help us to take something home with us, Lord, and apply it to our lives. God, we love you, and we thank you, and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So we see here um, that we have this uh, daddy. This daddy had his son, which was demon-possessed. In uh, the parallel text here, which is Mark chapter 9, uh, the Bible says that this boy was foaming at the mouth and gnashing his teeth. This boy was uh, demon-possessed. We see that uh, the daddy took his son to Jesus' disciples to heal him, to try to make him better, cure him. And they were not successful. But we see that this daddy didn't give up. He ended up taking his son to Jesus. He come up to him and said, Jesus, my boy is sick. There's some, some things wrong with him. This boy in particular had a lot of things wrong with him. This demon that was in him was controlling everything from uh, the foaming of the mouth to just the throwing himself into the fire and water. Uh, this boy had a lot going on with him. And this father didn't give up. So we see that he took him to Jesus and says, Jesus, I need you to help my son here. You see, I already took him to try to get help, and they couldn't do it, so I'm coming to you. And Jesus told the man to bring your son to me. Yeah. He brought him. And Jesus, he cast the devil out of this boy. The Bible says he was healed that very hour. The disciples who tried to heal him, I'm sure, were very humiliated that they couldn't uh, get this devil out of this boy. You see, Jesus had already given the power to do so. So we see that they, they, said, they pulled Jesus aside and said, 
They pulled him apart and said, why? Why couldn't we do this? You see, we did try. We tried to get the devil out of this boy. We tried to heal him. We, we tried to do like you told us to, but we just couldn't do it. Hence uh, why Jesus said, how long do I have to stay here? You know, how many times do I have to show you? You can sense a little frustration here where Jesus is uh, telling him, you know, that, you know, just move out of my way. Let me do it, you know. So we see that Jesus did get the demon out of this boy. He was healed. And he told the disciples the answer to their question. You couldn't do it, as verse 20 said, because of your unbelief. Right. Let me finish reading that again here. For verily I say unto you, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible to you. You see, he said, you, you have to have the faith. It's because of your unbelief that you are unable to do this. You see, because you doesn't take very much faith, you should have been able to heal this boy. So, I think it's an important lesson that uh, Jesus taught these disciples for future reference, to help them in their future ministry here, but it gives them an eye-opener of how important faith is. So tonight, I want to focus here on verse 20 and faith. The first thing we see in verse 20 was Jesus' answer to their question. It was their unbelief. The next thing he said was, Verily I say unto you. Brother, let me tell you, when Jesus says verily unto you, he has something important to say. So we need to pay attention to what he's saying here because there's a lot of power in these words. He said, Was faith as small as a grain of mustard seed? We can move a mountain. Now, how, how big is a mustard seed? It's been talked about here in the last couple months. Uh, Brother Ray brought it up. I heard Brother Tim talk about it. You know, a mustard seed is one of the tiniest little seeds in the world here. Yeah. It's about, you know, a one to two millimeters in length. It's uh, about the size of the lead of your pencil, a couple of grains of salt. It's a tiny little bitty object. Yeah. Why does it matter in this, in this verse here? Because the disciples, they didn't have a tape measure. They didn't have a ruler or anything to measure with. So Jesus used this small little device as a unit of measurement. And he picked one of the smallest unit of measurement he could find to measure something as big in this father's life as a mountain. He did this to show, by the way, it's not the size of the faith. It's about the quality of the faith. You see, with this little bitty tiny mustard seed, you can plant that thing. And as it matures and grows, that thing will grow into a, to a very large 15 to 30 foot tall shrub. How is there so much power in such a little tiny thing? Because of the life inside of it. I want to point out the life inside of this tiny little thing can do and pro produce such a very large thing as moving a mountain or growing a very large shrub in this case of the mustard seed. So we see here that it's about the life of the faith. In James chapter 2, we see that a lifeless faith, James calls it a dead faith. You see, that's what the disciples here had, was a dead faith. You see, they knew Jesus, they was walking with Jesus, but uh, by the demeanor that he said in this verse, it seems as if they were trying to heal this man on their own. He's saying it didn't take much faith here to heal this man. But, we're, but again, we're not talking about the size of the faith here, we're talking about the quantity. So, let's see what such a small uh, thing can do to a big thing. We see the Bible says that we can tell this mountain to move from here to yonder. We can move mountains with just a tiny little bit of faith here. Now that is real, live, true faith in the Lord Jesus. 
Now that's not saying that we're going to go out here on the porch of the church and look at Gumlog Mountain and say, go cast yourself into the ocean because, brother, that ain't going to work. I have high doubts that's going to be in the will of God there. So I don't see that mountain disappearing. This mountain that he's talking about is the problems, the trials, and sicknesses that are in your life. You see, there's a, we all face mountains. And if you're not in facing one right now, it's always said, hold on. There's one a coming. Or if you're up on the mountain, you're looking around and you see just clear skies, you don't see anything in front of you. Hold on, because there's a valley of coming. There'll be a mountain experience coming, and you're going to have to face it. We all face times of uh, heartache, times of sickness. I had heard at the beginning of service here about Miss Gwen. We all got the call this morning, Miss Gwen's not doing good. We need to be praying for her. She's facing a mountain, and we need to intercede these prayers for her mountain. And we need to be praying for the mountains that we are going to go through and what we're going through now. Yes. Now let's see here how Jesus said that we're going to get through this. It's going to be by faith. We see that this daddy that brought his son to Jesus, he already taken this problem to his brothers. He took it to the disciples. When I have a problem in my life and I take it to my friends, I take it to my family, I take it to my church and I ask, please pray for me. I, you know, I, that's how we're going to start to move these mountains. We've got to start with prayer. We've got to start by going to someone and asking for them to help us to pray. But in this case, the disciples couldn't do it. So we took it to Jesus and Jesus at the end of the verse here says, Howbeit this kind goeth not, but prayer and fasting. Right. If we want to move these mountains, we have to get serious. Yeah. We can't just sit here and try to carry the load on our own. We can't try to carry the weight of the mountain all by ourselves. We have the Lord Jesus. We have the Spirit of God living inside of us. And He will help us to carry and bear this load. But when this father took his son to Jesus... This, uh, in Mark chapter number 9, verse 23 and 24, uh, this is the conversation that he had with uh, Jesus here. Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believe. And straightway the father of the child cried out. And he said with tears, Lord, I believe. But he didn't stop there. He said, Help thou mine unbelief. You see, because of this man's faith, and because he told Jesus of his unbelief and asked Jesus to help him to get him the rest of the way there, Jesus healed his son. You see, we got this healing through faith. I like the last part of verse 20 here. It states that nothing shall be impossible unto you. Again, verse 21 says, How be it this kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. You know, if you want to get rid of these big mountains in your life, and let me take a moment to say that a lot of times God puts these mountains in your life, and a lot of times He allows these mountains, and sometimes we can pray and ask the Lord to do His will, and it's, His will may not be to remove these mountains. It may not be to remove it tonight or tomorrow. His will may be to get these mountains out of your way in the future on His time. Right. But we need to, like this Father, we need to cry out to the Lord. We need to give Him our unbelief and really get down and get serious and get right with God. See, it says we don't only need to pray, but we need to fast. You see, a lot of times we forget the importance of fasting. We have to give up a little bit of us to give it to Him. Amen. So, I know that everyone here, sooner or later, maybe now, maybe soon to come, has or is going through a mountain experience. 
we're facing a mountain in our life. We're facing trials and troubles, tribulations. Sometimes it's hard to pick up and go. Sometimes it's hard to get out of bed in the morning or we ask why we're doing what we're doing. But we see in this text here, this familiar text, that if we have a little, a little bit of faith, you see those of us who are saved have the Spirit of God. We have the life. We got Jesus living in us. We have the faith here. But like the song goes, we need to take it to the Lord yes. and leave it there. Amen. A lot of times we bear, we find ourselves bearing these uh, troubles, these mountains. Yes. Miss Heather, if I can get you to come on the piano. We need to try to take our eyes off of the mountain. Yes. And we need to put our eyes on Jesus. And if you happen to be here and tonight and you're not saved, if you don't have the Spirit of God living inside of you, as a reminder of 2 Corinthians 6.2, the Bible says, Now is the accepted time, and behold, now is the day of salvation. Yes. If you're not saved tonight, there's a way. Jesus made a way when He came and died on the cross, that way no one has to go to hell. And He makes a way where we don't have to fight these mountains alone. Church, there's a lot of sick in the church here. There's a lot of people going through troubles and trials. There's a lot of empty pews in this church. We have empty Sunday school classes. If we're not going through a mountain, or even if we are, let's intercede some prayers for our church, for our church family, for our uh, physical family and our uh, loved ones, our neighbors and our people at work. I think it would be appropriate tonight as it being a prayer, the Wednesday night prayer service, I think it would be appropriate if we had an altar of prayer. If the church, everyone who can and will come, I want to ask if You'd come and let's, let's take it to the Lord. But let's leave it there.